How can something as beautiful as this be dying? A plague is ruining the land, but the tree of life still stands. Question is, for how long? End is coming to the new world. The tribes stand divided, in need of someone strong enough to unite them, or bring them all down. This is a story with an unusual beginning. So, let's expect an unusual end. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy... Let me introduce myself. I'm the light and bright side of you, or your inner voice to be precise. An echo of balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. Seems more like you're being light-headed, if you ask me, but you'll come around, eventually. But what comes around goes all the way back around. So, it's better to stick to your instincts. You can't fight what's in your nature. In your nature? And here I was, hoping we'd be all about natural selection, survival of the strongest, and so forth. If that's not instinct, then I don't know what is. Natural selection is all about evolution and progress. And as soon as there's enough light, darkness will disappear. Right is always right. Stories of death and the bodies left behind. A reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the Predator only grew stronger. This is not the time nor place to end this story. It was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. The Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the tree of life started to die. Sharp steel. Make that one dead.
Axonol built vessels called Arks to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single Ark they left behind that we know other Arks travelled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste and, without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. before backup arrive. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then, the night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Muma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Muma's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. 
Potobuata. Chintuata Motifuasa. The impending threat of the world eaters bringing down the Tree of Life is ever so close. He also worries about the Jagni tribe that's actively working for a doomsday and purging of the world. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. <laughs> He understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the potato people. <laughs> the potato people, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. <laughs> You might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. The Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. Only time will tell. At least his intention is to dedicate his life to it. He has the feeling the fate of the world depends on it. You need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. <laughs> He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. Bid, Jude, better bid. Oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the 20, 12 months to come, so countless. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Mooma will be able to protect us. You can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. 
The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. <laughs> he says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Mooma comes looking for you. You did good here today. <laughs> No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the Tree of Life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the World Eaters arrived. genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse the Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eater's DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mekton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Goo Glide are almost ready to ride. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. You're getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. Know that the tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. Must be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. 
You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. The world eaters have made their marks on our world over time. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Look, a survivor. Glad to see someone made it out alive. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the world eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. <gasps> That's a spark of light in you! What's there to like about light? It hurts to look at. Not as much as it hurts to look at you. Always making this personal. And you're always trying to pretend it's not. There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. Out of date says you will make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe, and there are two nearby. The Myriad tribe is likely to be a good match as they act on the understanding of the greater good and have a code of honor. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy, as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jagni tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Chagney isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagney's or Myriad's side. He believes the tribe Sifus, Myriad especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. He can sense you share Myriad's view on the world. The Myriad would embrace someone willing to fight against the tyranny of the Jagni. Out of date will be waiting for you beneath the tree of life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? It's unusual that natural tunnels like this still exist. 
Most of them got flooded. That's the Myriad Tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. Says goodbye. Says they're cautious of non-allies. Points out that the Sifu has a tight schedule, but is willing to let you in and find out if he has an open slot. Understanding of the greater good and a code of honor, they believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the world eaters and saving the tree of life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. What? But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante Ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. He heard you took out of date side against the scavengers in Bunker 101. It seems you believe in helping your next. And that's something you have in common. Platz. He's convinced you've returned for a reason and is glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. The Sifu says sometimes one memory. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land, and there are rivals in all directions. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. If you believe there's some good in everyone, there's still hope for tomorrow. You'll unite the tribes and defeat the world eaters to save the Tree of Life. He was hoping you'd join them. You understand that there's no harm in doing good to others. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jagni tribe. The Jagni tribe may believe that fear and hatred will lead them to domination. A vanquisition of the tribes and destruction of the Tree of Life won't be the restart they want. It's just an end to everything. Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. Even those who desire peace have been forced to prepare for war. Fala, 
le vois le papa. Ya le vois, non. They might bring them war, but they'll never take away their inner peace. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wong Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. You both have gentle minds, so they want to wage a gentle war. A war that bonds as much as it breaks. Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. They pass the point of no return as their words lost power and see no other way forward than using violence to combat violence. Seeing you brings back his memories of the old village. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul and can sense you still have it in you, the will to do good. Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong and can sometimes come to life. Passing the old village on your way to the first rival outpost might help. Even though it's now a different place from a different time, it is a place that will make you remember. Time is lost on this place, but it evokes a tingling sensation. There's something special about it, drawing you closer. As time passes, memories fade, and sometimes feelings change. It's not about who you were, it's about who you'll become. This story is far from over. Echoes of a long-lost past, like whispers in the wind. Here's someone who takes each day as it comes. He asks how you are today. says he always does better whenever he leaves failure behind. He's happy his good mood is infectious. He wonders where you've been. He hopes you've been out at the lake, practicing your swimming technique. Learning to swim can be scary when you don't know what you're doing, but fortunately he's here to give you a helping hand. He thinks you should really know how to swim by now. And he'll be honored. No, walk. He says that wasn't too bad, was it? Way to go. Don't let the sound of the waves drown out your spirit. But you need practice. Lots of practice. Great things usually happen to those who never stop trying. He hopes you'll be one of them. You just need more time in the surf. That's the only way you'll ever learn how to swim. You can never try too hard. Judging by your Moomer's look, it seems you forgot something. 
Masama. You promised you'd train with her before the sun goes down. It's time to go. Andro? You know you can't make up for lost time. You should know. Practice makes perfect. Antoro. As long as it doesn't kill you, it'll only make you stronger. She'll see you at the village square. She says that... Here's another familiar face with lights on his mind. Asks how you're feeling today. Being nice comes easy for him. That doesn't make it less important. He was hoping you could help him pick up some scrap for a thingamajig he's working on. He thinks you're truly a kidling of your environment. You should look for things that are recyclable. It shouldn't take you too long to find some. What usefulness you found. He says every little thing counts. He can work wonders with almost anything and asks if you know how to upcycle. That's the spirit. You can't make a difference unless you get your hands dirty. He'd love to teach you to upcycle, and the scrap you found would be a good start. Oh, yeah. You did well, but he can't help but wonder why you decided to craft a weapon. Oh, yeah. He appreciates those able to deliver a sharp remark. Let's go. Well, I value by you. He understands, but hopes you won't be needing it any time soon. He thinks mastering the six weapon styles of Wang Fu is more than enough for anyone. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. It looks like she's starting to lose her patience. You know she doesn't like waiting for you. She wants to see you on the village square right away. Then you've got a good excuse. You share a responsibility to prevent hardship on nature and the environment. It's your future. She wants you to grow up and start thinking for yourself. You really need to find yourself before she's gone. That's all she's ever asked of you, that you try and give it your best. You can't do more than that. You've always followed your own path, but this time she needs you to follow her. Then start by meeting her on the village square and take it from there. She knows you're a free spirit, always on the move, like the wind. They look determined. Better watch out. He asks you to stop right there and wonders where you think you're going. That means... There's no way they'll let you pass. He wants to know who you think you are. They push each other to become better, and sometimes someone gets pushed down along the way.
She asks if you're hurt. What happened? She says it's nice of you to consider them, but they have weapon training at sunrise tomorrow, so they'll need all the rest they can get. The most important thing is that you're okay. It's time to focus on your training now. You won't need excuses if you are strong in your conviction. Someone close to heart, doing what he does best? Coffee, miss. Seeing you always puts a smile on your Popsy's face. He wants to know how you're feeling. He heard you helped Gizmo clean up. He's proud of you. He asks if you could help him too before you leave for training. He wishes that was true for your Mooma too, but guiding the village into the future and teaching Wang Fu to her disciples seems more important for every day. He suggests you get going and find him gadgets and ideas for how you can upcycle some old fabrics. to see what you found. He's all for renewal and has even considered making the trip out into the wilds to look for a bio-nucleus pool and refresh his DNA. He can work wonders with pretty much anything and asks if you know how to upcycle. Think some are and some aren't. One thing's for sure, though, your Mooma thinks it all takes up too much space in the house. He says it's about time you learned how and offers to teach you, starting with the scrap you found. Why are higher? The style might be too edgy for his taste, but he looks sharp on you. Mustafa. He knows she's already proud of you and everything you've achieved so far. You should take it with you, wear it to practice. He's sure your Mooma will forgive you for not wearing the traditional outfit. He's looking forward to seeing what you'll make next. It seems you have a talent for this. Your Mooma says it's about time you got here. Hopes you're as ready as you claim to be. She says she is eager to get started. You don't have much time left before the sun goes down. But there's enough time left for repetition and you need it. Training dummies don't hit back. Wants you to prove that with some practice first. Your Mooma says you did well today. She's so proud of you. That's all she's ever asked of you. 
Susanna gjorde med Stig Morka. Been working on a present for you with the help of Gizmo and Wiz. Bola kodo. You should go see him and find out what it is. You've deserved it. Come on. No. That's why you should be sure to thank him for it. Your Mooma says she's never seen an apparatus as green as this little thing. It's wonderful. Come on, no. She's happy you appreciate what others do for you. A piece of Scraptronics like this has built-in old world tech that makes it a potent communication device. It's called an automaton and it's hardwired to your DNA. It'll follow wherever you go and see whatever you see. You're lucky to have such a fine helper with you. Your Mooma says you look tired. No wonder, it's been a long day. Says a good rest makes you ready for tomorrow. Rest and you'll find strength for tomorrow. urges you to blaze a trail. A burnt kidling will learn to dread fire. That's just adding fuel to the flames. Give it a last burst and you'll make it. Your Mooma says this is it. The time has come. She must... Can't see. There's nowhere to run to this time. The time has come to stand and fight. Whatever happens, you need to know she loves you. And everything she's done has been to protect you, your Popsy, and those she was chosen to lead. She tells you to stay back. This is her fight. It has nothing to do with you. History has finally caught up with her. She loves how brave you are, but she can't be worrying about you while she fights. This is her fight. Here it comes, the past coming to haunt the present. through fire and water to make it out of here. Your Mooma says you can make it if you believe in it. Where she goes, you go. Blood is thicker than water. You're in deep surf. Don't make waves. The surf goes where it wants to go. It'll take you to the shore as long as you go with the flow.
is not to be feared by one who has lived life with a pure heart. A part of her will live on in you. The creature is hungry for more. Nothing is going to stand in its way now. If a sacrifice is made for someone else, it's not lost, but passed on to the next. Life must go on. Real sacrifice comes from love and necessity when all other options are exhausted. The ultimate test of conscience is the willingness to give up anything to save what you truly care about. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for your king remains and makes you immortal in their memory. As the moment fades and is lost, the only thing that remains is loneliness. It doesn't mean you'll forget your past. It simply means you need to move on. The tribe's caught a fluffy hawk. Better watch out, it's no pet. They couldn't keep it down. Fluff hulks on the loose. Your key is gone. You gave them no choice but to take it down, even though they planned to take the Fluff Hulk out to the far Fnacky leaves and let it go. They've received news a Ronin had strengthened their ranks and were looking forward to meeting you. A group of myriad crusaders already headed out to Jagni's Mercadorpus outpost and are waiting for you there. You should hurry there and help them best the outpost. Not really. It's west of Bricktown. You can spot Gizmo's chug yard from the hill it resides on. Sorry. 
says it's time to set the outpost free. Inflict as little damage as possible as you make your way through to the rival captain. Freedom is not worth having in a world that's doomed. Here's the first line of defense. is holding a helper. hope you'd come but weren't sure if they'd last long enough to see it says the tribe's been hard on them wants revenge on those who caged them but trust you'll take care of it a sharpshooter the scaffolding looks unstable Here's the second line of defense. Better stay clear of the Red Ray. bring it down. Switched off the light. A barrel shoot. Smack it to get a barrel out of it, then hit it toward the gate and blast it. That looks slowly. Shoot it and walk up, boom. The outpost belongs to your tribe now. He says you made them weaker, but they won't give up. Your Sifu thanks you. Your tribe is growing stronger. Says you did a great job capturing the outpost. You've earned the privilege of carrying the tribe's weapon. Figures the honor belongs to the tribe, too. Hello. 
It's time to set the rival tribe free. Inflict as little damage as possible as you make your way through to their Sifu. You need to unite the tribes and save the Tree of Life to truly become free. Fire starter. The dry grass looks like it would ignite easily. You just need to create a spark to light a fire. At night, baddies can't see you so. It burns brighter than the light. Bonka looks like a great way to get through the gate. Bet you just need to knock and it will open up. That's bonkers. Jagni tribe wants to become omnipresent and, most importantly, feared. They want to vanquish the tribes as the only way they can guarantee peace is through supremacy. He didn't expect it would go down this way. It'll be hard to talk your way out of a fight. He's not sure if you're likable enough to just give up the fort without a fight. He realizes a peaceful end would be best. He'll entrust the fort to you. The rival Sifu is defeated, and the destiny of their tribe is in your hands. You are free to choose their fate but not free from the consequences of your choice. He'll leave it up to you to decide the fate of the rival Sifu, but suggests you be merciful. Do good, and good will follow you. Thinks it's a good gesture to offer support to others when you can see that they need it. And with that, you're spinning your own fate good or bad, never to be undone. Side by side they'll stand until order and stability is reinstituted. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of.
He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wung Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. Get a one thing. Your Sifu is pleased. You're one step closer to uniting the tribes. It's a pity you needed to use force to get the point across. But he's still concerned about the fate of the world. You can't lose this war. If you get the ending wrong, the effort it took to get there was in vain. A proper ending, however, provides closure. He says you've grown so much stronger than when you first met. You know better than anyone that the fate of the world is still at stake. You need a world where everyone is guided only by their conscience. The fate of the world depends on the triumph of good. The tree of life still stands, and it's up to you to make sure it does so to the end. Such a windswept place. It's time to set the rival tribe free. All the goods are gonna head egg egg. Schleiner for Rotna Mika. Convincing the Sifu that peace. You just need to knock and it'll open up. That's bonkers. The Netra tribe this values liberty cool. and is striving to protect freedom. They Most want to continue with each well, tribe being responsible for their own and believe that uniting Rah. the tribes is Rah. the Rah. only way Rah. you can survive. Rah. He was hoping it wouldn't end this way. There's no reason to fight instead of uniting. It would be fighting over nothing. He thinks being likable isn't enough. If fight is all you do, he can't stand by you. He's realized a peaceful end to this would be best. He'll entrust the fort to you. Hello, my the rival Sifu is defeated, and the destiny of their tribe is in your hands. You are free to choose their fate, but not free from the consequences of your choice. He'll leave it up to you to decide the fate of the rival Sifu, but suggests you be merciful, do good. Thinks it's a good gesture to offer support to others when you can see that they need it. And with that, you're spinning your own fate, good or bad, never to be undone.
Side by side they'll stand until order and stability is reinstituted. He's gotten news that the other tribes have realized there are no winners in this war. There's no purpose in antagonism. All three of them believe your tribe has grown strong enough to unite them. It's clear your efforts have been successful. There's light at the end of the tunnel. The tribes are tired of war and will remember the one who brought them peace, whether you decide it'll be now or later. So, do you want to end the war now or continue the crusade? He agrees. Better save your energy for something meaningful. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. The spent nuclear fuel that toxinol dumped in the surf had detrimental effects on the marine habitats, while the overflowing landfills contaminated the groundwater. Combined, this sent their world hurtling on an inevitable road to ruin. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. Gizmo remembers you as a nice kidling, and he can still sense the warmth of your good heart. But Gizmo says how you experience a memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. It carries so much hate, and its insatiable hunger has only increased over the years since it claimed revenge on your parents. Gizmo says he also has re-memories from the long gone, but unlike you, he doesn't think of the past, for it's gone. He understands history made Loopa Loop in a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. Fruit, drip, drink, typo, speech, spa, this. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Speech, spa, this. What is that? Gizmo encourages that. You should forgive, but never forget. It'll provide some comfort to your soul and keep the memory of lost loved ones in your heart. Fan that flame! Wait, no! Uh, bright light blinds! It's, it's dangerous! I've got all the cold sick burns you need, Dark. Oh, do you have to insult me over this? I don't have to, but I want to! <laughs> would like to know if you ever doubt the choices you made on the path that brought you to this point. Would you have been happier going in a different direction? 
supposes that's all any of us can do. Please hold on. Hold on. Hard to believe the world is actually going to survive. Just seemed impossible till now. Yeah, you did. Grateful to you for coming back and doing your best to change things. You were the only chance they had. Wolf <laughs> what? Wonders if you liked working with the Myriad. They always seemed so centered and so seeking. Well, I value by you. Bang. Need your dope. Double do. Figures everyone does. They seem unusually dedicated to finding them. <laughs> but that's not important now. Feel free, friends. Young buddy. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present. And where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. He can't leave the Underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the dead zone. So you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the Mecton, starting with the old crate outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the Mecton strong enough to fight the Jumbo Puff. It's the part of the land that suffered most from the apocalypse. It's deprived of oxygen, making it next to impossible for anything but creatures that were most contorted by the contamination. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Has plenty to do, so no worries. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. the leftover you're looking for. Strange not having the sky above. He says that's enough to get the Mecton functional. 
you'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. He made a suction device so the Mekton can use the black tar as an instant refuel. You can also use it to clear oily goo puddles so you can pass and access hard to get to areas. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. The best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. Once you find Moog, he'll be able to give you directions to where you'll find Scripps. Spitzbrapis! Gizmo thinks he's a little peculiar, but very knowledgeable. He has the ins and outs of all monster and creature whereabouts. That's a jumbo puff with an appetite. Ain't no fuss. Let us put an end to it before it ends our world. is kicking it up a notch. It's time for an electric performance. bad feeling about this. It goes all the way down to the stump. That's too close to the end station. Better move up, up and away, or be swept out the bowel way. down. Don't let it happen again. You see, it's what's on the inside that counts. That meaty Taurus is already offbeat. End it. The Taurus, who would have guessed it would go down with a throw-up? Can it really get any better than that? He 
thanks you for dealing with the first world eater. It's a start. You should go see out of date and find out what you can about the machine he's named the Ark. You're good hearted enough, so you'll have no problem getting him to share the information with you. He trusts you know where to find out of date by now. He's always been at the foot of the tree, and that hasn't changed. There it is, the tree of life. The idea that all life is related by common descent. Where the twigs are existing species and those produced in the past represent the succession of the extinct. The tree's great branches were once budding twigs, a connection between the past, present and future. A representation of all extinct and living species with its ever-branching and beautiful ramifications. We are an evolution of those that came before. It's a place well hidden. It's just below the above. Out of dates impressed you made it this far. But there's still so much left to do. The end of the world is still on everyone's minds. You've beaten a path where you have the power to destroy or save everyone. Question is, what you'll do with that responsibility? He can sense that your heart beats steadily and acknowledges that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Thinks it's important that you remember who you are and where you came from. Someone without knowledge of their history and origin is like a tree without roots. It's important to stay grounded. You share the same fate as the tree. Out of date says there's a time for everything. And now there's no use thinking of the past, for it's gone. Think of the present because that's where you are. It's time to set your priorities as the one who completes things. If you continue to do good, good will follow you. If the world really does end, there won't be anywhere to run. So he's prepared for the worst, something he calls the Ark. He hopes you're right. He gets that you mean the journey continues either way, but personally, he wants the tree to survive. Out of date says there's no clear record of the chain of events that changed the course of history and brought the world to its knees. He's found evidence on the Ark, records of a crisis decades of contamination that permeated the ground and broke its inner core. The contamination disrupted what we now know as key energy, the life force that runs through all things, living and inanimate. He's been told the blight affected everything at a genetic level and turned our perception of normality on its head. It was only those that changed that avoided extinction, proving that the possibility for survival and renewal was real. He understands you are curious about the ship at the foot of the tree. He says it surfaced when the oil broke through the ground. The Ark predates the back-in days, and now, 
after years of study of the manuals he found inside, he believes he's figured the ship out. Is. The Ark has room for four more, and he trusts you'll apply wisdom to your compassion and choose whom to save if the world comes to end. He'll keep the seats open, and you are free to invite up to four others to join you in the Ark in the event of a cataclysm. Out of date says that from what he's heard, you've been busy. He says he appreciates what you've done so far, but unfortunately he's got urgent news from his friend Goop in the southeast. Out of date says that even though he's unsure about your intentions, he hopes you'll support Goop. He says he'll point you in the right direction, but finding Goop and making sure he gets what he needs is up to you. That's the sound of impending doom. Out of date's premonitions of imminent disaster are true. The porky puff needs to be handled. Out of date says that Goop is worried now that the Southeast World Eater is stepping up its activity. He explains that Goop is working on a goo gliding vessel in order to get to the World Eater, but needs help to get it done. Out of date suggests that you should head southeast as fast as possible and see what you can do to help. He wonders what's on your mind. Has plenty to do, so no worries. Gulpo ain't the easiest tongue, but I think he says he's happy to see a friendly face. Not too many of those around these days. Avanya says it's good to see you again. He's Goop. You might remember him from the old days when he tried to teach you how to swim. Goop says you were always so righteous as a child, and he can still feel it, even at a distance. Goop says memories fade surprisingly fast. We are all pieces of what we remember. It's only together we can remember the story as it was. He can't tell you much as he didn't want to hear anything about it. He can't understand how someone could be so vicious, even though he knows there are reasons behind it. Goop says our memory keeps things for us and protects them until we are ready to face them again. He understands you've returned to face Lupa Lupin. That's the destiny you've been carrying within yourself all these years. He says that the catastrophe back then didn't vanquish the good in you. It's still there, as bright as when you were a child. Now the time has come for you to remember and act. Your life is your life, not the story you're told about it. He thinks that's the right thing to do. It's only when you have forgiven that you'll find peace. That's so bright! Seriously, you like the shine? You just don't want anyone to get a good look at you. Uh, Dark is stylish. <laughs> Lie to yourself all you like, darling. Says life on the goo is wide open. You have so many choices of where to go. Some harder than others, of course. Which kind do you like? 
Hit the open surf then. The trouble is you can only rely on yourself, at least until you reach a new shore and make new friends. Can hardly believe the world is going to make it. Wonders what that's going to do to the goo. Thanks you for doing everything you could to de-goop the surf. Thinks the Myriad made a good match with you. You're both like sunshine on the surf. Claims he didn't say that. Out loud. But hey, back to the goo. Knows yesterday is already gone. It's what you do today and tomorrow that'll move you forward. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. He can't leave the Subnautica station, as the pollution has worn down the insulation of his suit. So you must salvage enough scrap to fix up his goo glide, starting with the old wreck box outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no time to waste if you want to make the goo glide strong enough to fight the Porky Puff. You're lucky that way. There's still cargo left on the shores from before the apocalypse. His best guess is a power tanker hit a reef and went under. left. That's enough quacks to sustain the Goo Glide Flipper with infinite ammunition. Goop says he was there when the Porky Puff took out of Date's leg, so this World Eater has made it personal. After that, 
out of date started using his head instead of his legs and came up with the plan on how to best make a stand against the world eaters and it wasn't by foot. That's how he got tasked with rebuilding the Googlide. He seems happy to talk. Says automatons like that are rare. Excited to meet someone with a bright aura. You're a rare sort these days. Wouldn't be surprised if you met again. He seems happy to talk. Says you should take care. It's the porky puff nibbling bark. It took quite a liking to the crunchy stuff after munching down out of date's leg. Opportunity slide. He thanks you for dealing with another world eater. You're halfway there. He's got word out of date spotted Lupa Lupin and has a feeling your time has come. He hopes you're up for it. Even though you're good hearted, you shouldn't miss this opportunity to confront the predator. Just head back to the foot of the tree. Fingers crossed, Lupa Lupin will stay put until you're there. Out of date says the time has come for you to reconcile with your past. Lupa Lupin is still staying in the camp where he was brought up. He hopes you'll find the answers you are looking for there. Even though darkness is a part of your nature, he suggests you try to keep your cool, as the best fighter is never angry. He'll point you in the right direction, but the rest is up to you. This part of the journey is one you'll have to do on your own. Lupa Lupin's camp has always been there, hidden deep inside the mountains. Out of date hopes you'll find your way and the answers you were looking for once you're there. He knows he said it before, but the time has come to put an end to the Lupin's reign of terror. You should get over there. Come face to face with destiny. It's going to be you against the Lupin. No rules.
Lupa Lupin's camp has always been there, hidden deep inside the mountains. says he's been looking for you to this moment. He wanted you to come here and see for yourself where it all started. He was so little when your mother and kin came here to put an end to his mother just because she was different, a hunter. That night, the hunter became the hunted, trapped with nowhere to run. He says your mother showed no mercy only vengeance. He can see that you're not like your mother. There's something different about you. Maybe you would have made a better decision than she did and let them be. They orphaned him, left him alone, an outcast and a freak. Lupa Lupin says he's been reliving the moment every night since then. He says your mother and her disciples started something that couldn't be undone. They created the monster he would become. He knew his time would come and he was patient. So, when he got news about your birth, he knew how to get revenge that would last. That's why he spared you that night he raised the village when you were a child. He wanted you to suffer for life, like he had. Just so. He marked you for life, so he'd recognize you when you met again, and you'd eventually remember where you came from. His hunger grew insatiable over the years to come. He tried, but being vegetarian wasn't in his nature, and he couldn't go hungry. Just so. But he's never taken a life for the sake of appetite. It's always been about survival, and that our true self is being who we are. A deep look into nature will make you understand everything better, and that natural selection eliminates, and the strongest survive. Fate is for those too weak to determine their own destiny. And now, the time has come for you to accept yours.
Out of date says that from what he's heard, you've been busy. He says he appreciates what you've done so far, but unfortunately he's got urgent news from his friend Noko in the east. Out of date says that even though he's unsure about your intentions, he hopes you'll support Noko. He says he'll point you in the right direction, but finding Noko and making sure she gets what she needs is up to you. That doesn't sound good. Out of date was spot on. The hoof puff needs to be stopped. Out of date says that Noko is worried now that the Eastern World Eater is stepping up its activity. He explains that Noko keeps a fabled steed that she has planned to ride out to the World Eater, but needs help to get it prepared. Out of date suggests that you should head east as fast as possible and see what you can do to help. Nooks isn't an easy language, but at least it's manageable. She says she is so happy to see you again. She wonders if you remember her. She's Noko. She let you ride her majut when you were a kid. Noko remembers you used to chase around with so much energy and is glad to see you haven't lost any of that spark. But that's all long gone now, though. Memories show us where we've been, not where we're going. Seems reluctant to even say its name. It's become personal to her too since it's taken so many of her innocent gnotes as prey. Noko remembers those days too, but she never lets herself wallow in them, no matter how tempting that can be. She sees your back to buck with Lupa Lupin. Can't see how there's any way to avoid that now. Not for long, at least. She says the horrors of your younger days were enough to ruin anyone. But not you. You've got all that cheer about you still. Noko says history is like the trail you've been on. You can walk back down it any time you like, until it's worn smooth. But you get to blaze your own trail from here. Then you are stronger than her. She can't help wanting Lupa Lupin to pay for what he did to her ganotes, despite the fact it's against her nature. Getting brighter every time! Oh, no. Go look at yourself in a mirror. Can't. Everyone you looked in cracked. That was only one time. I have a shop full of shattered mirrors that says you're wrong. Asks how many paths you've wandered in the world and if you ever wonder about what might have changed if you'd taken different ones. You can't do everything you want, can't go everywhere, can't see everything, only what you can. So happy the world is going to live, would have been crushed to see all the gnotes die with it. Likes that you stood up for the world and spurred your way toward helping it out. Andro? Glad you saw the light with the myriad. They always bring a sparkliness to any day, and sometimes the nights do. Come on, uh. Says that's only for a little while, and when your eyes clear, you see everything even better than before. Anarolote. But let's not speak of that now. She has an idea where the Majut might have gone, as there's no other place it likes as much as its own corner of the open wild. 
She's even named it the Majut Meadow. Kala, Berry, Kototoko. The Majut will recognize the scent you've attracted while being here, so it'll probably trust you enough to follow you. You should lead the Majut back here when you find it. It's going to take time to get it calm enough to be able to ride out to the World Eater. It's the most magnificent creature she's ever encountered. A creature straight out of a dream or story. Nothing's more important right now than this. You found the Majut Meadow. Watch out for the Majut. Now that the Majut is back in the pen, it seems calm, but Noko is still concerned. Betty? She says the Majut is still anxious, but fortunately she knows just the thing it needs to calm down. The Majut once found and ate a bonbon gummy by mistake, and that the chewing really calmed it down. She says that you should find some bonbon gummies for the Majut by the crossway. At least, that's where she found some last time. It's easy to describe. A crossway is where roads meet in a knot and merge. This one is in Sector 7J, if you're familiar with Out of Date's map. Cranks like these usually need to be wound to operate the dispenser. Just a few moves left. Make them count. What you see is what you get. Once it's out of the blind box, that is. That's the good stuff. That's enough glitter moths to make her plan work. She wants you to stop worrying about the paths you've ridden and focus on the inevitable road ahead, the one that leads to confrontation with the World Eater. The hoof puff is evidence of the duality of evolution utterly beautiful and grotesque at the same time. She means that the hoof puff has had more time to eat at the root as it's been isolated in the Knoopstoni's mountains. So, based on that alone, she reckons it has suffered as much damage as the northwest root that's hidden beneath the surf. It reminds her of the gnotes and, like them, it's hoofed. They're just a lot bigger.
Well, the ghosts are gonna head eh, eh. That sealed the fate of the third world eater. Just one more to go. Out of date asked to see you again to congratulate you and let you in on the final phases of his plan. This is your chance to get his priorities aligned with yours. Do right by your tribe and the world at large. Just head back to the Ark. He seemed eager to see you again. Out of date says there'll be consequences of the war, but there are more pressing matters at hand. The last world eater has been left undisturbed with the tree while you focused on the war. He thought someone with your light perspective and key would have had different priorities and faced the world eaters before resolving the tribe war. Regardless, out of date is grateful the tribe war is over. Out of date understands the road has been rough, but you already know what's left to end this journey, and it'll be tough. You're the only one that's strong enough to face the last world eater. The future depends on someone with a light perspective to give the world a chance to survive. Only time will tell what the future holds and if it will bring a lasting peace for those that make it to the end. Out of date says the word about what you've done so far is spreading. The tribes haven't lost hope yet. He appreciates what you've done so far, but unfortunately he's had urgent news from his friend Wiz in the Northwest. He's unsure about your intentions, but hopes you'll support Wiz. He says he'll point you in the right direction, but finding Wiz and making sure he gets what he needs is up to you. That doesn't sound good. Out of date's hunch is real. The Merc Puff is up next. Out of date says that Wiz is worried now that the Northwest World Eater is stepping up its activity. He explains that Wiz is working on an undersurf vessel in order to get to the World Eater, but needs help to get it done. Out of date suggests that you should head northwest as fast as possible and see what you can do to help. The Surge Surf Factory. Keep your eye out for Wiz while you're here. Wooz isn't easy on the tongue, but I think he says he's happy to see a friendly face. Not too many of those around these days. Says it's good to see you again. He's Wiz. You might remember him from the old days when he let you try his octopod? Wiz remembers you were such a cheery kid, and he's glad to see that light hasn't faded from you, despite the years. But Wiz understands it was a long time ago, and memories get murkier the deeper you go, but says it helps to have friends with you to plumb those depths. He set up camp at the foot of the Tree of Life. It's gotten more difficult for it to find defenseless prey as it's already eaten most of them. And Wiz says our memory keeps things for us, preserves them until we are ready to face them again. 
good about me, Katu. He knows you've returned to face Looper Lupin, and that confrontation is as inevitable as the tides. He's not surprised that the loss of your family could plunge you into the depths forever. But you've always been able to rise like a bubble to the surface, no matter what. He knows that though the tides of history may... Ultimately, it's your choice. You were the one to be wronged and have lived with the consequences. He believes in consequence as it's a direct result of action. Love the glow of the light. No. Down. Down. Oh. All the way up. Crank that glow up to 11. I'll make you glow. Too late. Asks if you ever think about freedom and whether any of us really has it. Did you make the decisions that brought you here, or are you just a pawn of fate? Maybe that's true for you, but he's not so sure about his own fate. Amazed the world is going to continue on, but happy to hear it. Still so many things to invent. Impressed that you fought so hard to keep the world spinning. Thinks you were smart to join with the Myriad. They have a rainbow of ways to approach any problem. Says they're unified in the ways that matter. But that's not nearly as important as this. Wiz says that you should let the past dwell in the depths. But there's something else down there, too, gnawing at the Tree of Life. He's named it the Merc Puff. This is why he's tinker tonkering with the octopod. But the lid got stuck, so he needs a big enough tug twister to open it up and let you a go in. He can't leave the surge station, so you must help him find a tug twister. There's a wound up mecha fingro in the mecha stadium that still has one stuck on its back. Find it, and you'll find the tug twister. It's definitely made to lend a helping hand and do the heavy lifting. Toxinol records mention it as an automaton made for moving bionucleus matter into storage areas. Gross. This place stinks. It's a bit less black out there. You need to loosen the bolts without unsettling it. The tug twister's loose. Let's hope it turned the grabbing hand into a helping hand, too. He believed the tug twister would do the trick, but now realizes brute force won't do the trick. You need something slick. Well, he means slick, as in greasy, so you can lube the hinges of the lid. He can't argue against the fact your fur's shiny. He says the lid should open if you sprinkle grease it. Problem is, he's all out. He knows his old friend Choo Choo always keeps his grease sprinklers well filled. He should have an extra that you can borrow. He stresses that you should come back as soon as you've retrieved the grease sprinkler. The Merc Puff is crunching bark by the minute. Wiz heard he's currently stranded at the end of the line, so it should be easier to track him down now compared to when he's running rails. 
You've reached the end of the line. Bet you can find Choo Choo here. Choo Choo knew you would make it to him one day. All you had to do was follow the steel path. The rails might be getting rusty, but eventually they all converge on him. Claims rails are like rules. If you follow them the way you're supposed to, everything good in life can roll your way. Says you followed the rails to where you need to be, but tracks have switches in them too. The question is then, will you keep on the same track or look for a way to hit that switch? You seem like you're on the right track already. He just hopes you don't get sidetracked onto a darker path. Whichever way you go, he wants you to know that the rails never steer you wrong. Stick to them and they always bring you right to where you're meant to be. Wants to know if you've ever regretted taking one track in life instead of another. If you could go back, would you switch tracks or keep chugging along the one you're on? Thinks everyone has. No one's perfect every time. Seems like the world came out of its rut and is chugging toward higher ground again. Can't thank you enough for hitting the brakes and working to turn the world chug around. But let's not get derailed. Says he's surprised to see anyone this far out, but sometimes the wrong train does take you to the right station. As you can see, he didn't plan to make a stop here, but now that he had to, he's really happy to see you. He says his name is Choo Choo. He's been off track since the world started dying, but he's trained his mind to stay positive regardless of the situation. Says sometimes life runs off the rails, but it's always better when they're good and greased. He's convinced the tracks are like the paths our lives take, and you must deal with the outcome, even if you didn't lay them yourself. This time, though, he was sidetracked and needs a new wing nut to get back on track. Wing nuts are easy to find as they're fitted on any in front chugger chugger out there. The challenge is taking them off, so he's happy you're here to do it for him. Says you're just like he used to be a one track mind, but going the right way. Now. What? Wait, no, I, I'm right here. What's that? Did someone say something? I am right here. Hello? Is anyone there? Just a few moves left. Make them count. says he knew you'd come through. If someone makes a stop at your station, it's for a good reason, but he understands no one gets their tracks greased for free. He'd be happy to part with his spare grease sprinkler, as he believes it's a great fit for any of your business that needs to be unstuck. He keeps it safe in a box on the handcart in case of emergency. It's on the cart. He wants to keep it close by. In general, you won't have much time to act in case of an emergency. Choo Choo says you should help yourself to the grease sprinkler. 
It's a versatile tool from the bygone, a last of its kind, so don't let it go to waste. He's convinced you'll put it to good use, as there are lots of stuckies out there that need greasing to open. Seems glad you think so. You're on the right rail. Choo Choo says he can't wait to get out of this place. Didn't have much else to say, so no problem. That seems to be enough guppos to provide the octopod with infinite ammunition. He's surprised the Merc Puff's been able to hold its breath all this time. It's just another proof of the evolutionary change caused by Toxanol's contamination. Being underserved has meant the Merc Puff has been left alone to munch on the root down there undisturbed. This means the Northwest Root has suffered more damage than the others. He's sure there's enough time to confront the Merc Puff, but he worries if the world has enough years left to last his lifetime, even if you stop the World Eaters.
was the last of them. You've sealed the fate of the tribe and the tree. It's time for the end game. You have your destiny. Follow it all the way back to out of date. He never told anyone about what's next, but he's sure it involves you. Just continue to stay true to yourself and respect others whatever happens. You've become their pride, the guiding light of the tribe. It's time to return to the tree one last time. Out of date says the signs of the end of the world are everywhere. It seems nature is preparing to take revenge. The day of reckoning is coming and you are invited. He can feel you're approaching the end date. If you haven't decided whom of all like-minded, light-hearted beings you've met have earned a seat on the Ark yet, it's time to do that now. Then grasp your last chance to make sure Lupa Lupin stopped for good. The tree settled its score, but it left yours half done. He says you need to see Lupa Lupin eye to eye one last time. What? The Sifu is seeking revenge too. He hasn't forgotten what Lupa Lupin did, but he also wants to stop him from attacking his tribe. That the world seems to survive doesn't mean he must. He hopes you agree, even if it goes against your light-hearted nature. There's no room for predators in the world the Myriad tribe is building. But he knows this is your fight. You should handle it. Lupa Lupin's own fear was his shackles, not the roots of the tree. It just changed him. You have a chance to stand back and let the tribe handle it. step into the fray. Are the odds about to change in your favor? Save the Sifu by making yourself a target. Dora. spread when the world crumbles. This is not a prophecy, me telling you about the future. It's you shaping it. Here's a vulgar display of power.
It's time you remember who the real enemy is and stop playing the game his way. This is how it ends. The predator and the world itself suffering. But at least it's a sign they're both still alive. So, what we have here is a clear matter of life and death, and only you can make a difference. You continue to make bad decisions and mistakes. Oh, it never ends. It's easy to make a good decision when there's only one option. The only mistake here is you. My mistake is letting you speak. My conviction is that the world would be a better place without your voice. Convincing yourself doesn't win the argument. In the end, we won't remember the words of our enemies, but the silences of our friends. The weak can't forgive. Forgiveness is a strength. It's not all life and death. It's no better time than now to accept a helping hand. Do you wonder what turn life might have taken if you'd done things different? A left when you went right? A yes when you said no? You've walked the thin line between survival and disaster and haven't lost your balance yet. It's because of you the Tree of Life and the world has been given a second chance. You carried the light in a world full of dark and made a difference in a place that needed change. You allied with the Myriad tribe and acted on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. However, Light and dark does simply represent the polarities of life. One can't exist without the other. This isn't the end. Just being surrounded by nature as it heals itself will rejuvenate us. Nature will teach us how to survive. So, trust your conscience to show you the way and everything else will follow.
As foretold, you were destined to split the chains of this world. But you're not alone. Those that shared your perspective and gained your trust will accompany you on your journey. Is there a world out there that's better suited for those imbalanced in their life nature than this one? Whether or not, we'll leave your story on record so those who come after will know you followed your light nature and saved the world. So, when all is said and done, it turned out to be an unusual ending after all. What could be better than ending the story the right way? Ending it your way, a beginning of something new.